Selena, let's start by taking a step back in time. 1957 marked the beginning of the satellite era. That's when Sputnik 1 was launched, the first ever artificial satellite. It was a small spherical satellite that simply transmitted radio signals back to Earth. Yet, it was enough to kickstart the space age. Soon after, satellites began evolving rapidly for scientific and commercial uses. It's incredible how far we have come since then. Yeah, Raphael. Satellites today serve such a wide range of purposes. Communication satellites are like the backbone of our modern connectivity. They relay internet, television, and phone signals, allowing people to stay connected no matter how far apart they are. They have made remote communication and even broadcasting from remote areas seamless. Exactly. We also have Earth observation satellites. These are vital for monitoring environmental changes, things like deforestation, glacier melt, or even natural disasters like hurricanes and wildfires. Then there are weather satellites, which observe atmospheric conditions to improve forecasting and help predict severe weather events like cyclones or floods. And let's not forget navigation satellites. Systems like GPS rely on networks of navigation satellites to give us precise location data, whether it's for aviation, shipping, or even the GPS app on your phone. And, of course, scientific and exploration satellites. These are the ones studying outer space, gathering data about cosmic radiation, distant galaxies, and even planetary geology. Selena, small satellites have taken the satellite world by storm in recent years. Traditional satellites can weigh several tons and cost billions of dollars to develop and launch. Small satellites, on the other hand, weigh less than 500 kilograms, and their production and launch costs are significantly lower. Plus, they can often piggyback on larger rocket missions as secondary payloads. By sharing a launch with a primary payload, small satellite operators significantly reduce their costs compared to booking a dedicated launch. This is especially beneficial for startups, universities, or smaller organizations with limited budgets. You can say small satellites are democratizing access to space technology, and they are versatile too. Small satellites are being used for Earth observation, scientific experiments, telecommunications, and even global internet projects like SpaceX's Starlink. In 2015, Elon Musk's SpaceX first announced its ambitious plan to create a global internet service powered by a mega constellation of small satellites. It wasn't until May 2019, though, that we saw the first 60 operational Starlink satellites launched into orbit. No kidding. The progress SpaceX has made is remarkable, from concept to thousands of satellites in just a few years. It's fascinating how Starlink integrates so many of today's cutting-edge technologies. Traditional satellites orbit at approximately 36,000 kilometers above the Earth, while small low-Earth orbit satellites operate at altitudes of 500 to 2,000 kilometers. Because these small satellites are much closer to the Earth, the data has to travel a shorter distance, resulting in faster transmission times. Hmm. You mean by using low-Earth orbit, small satellites significantly reduce latency compared to traditional large satellites in geostationary orbit, right? That's right, Selena. Latency refers to the delay in data transmission between a user and a server. Low Earth orbit satellites can achieve latencies as low as 20 to 40 milliseconds, comparable to terrestrial broadband. Whereas, traditional geostationary satellites often have latencies of 500 milliseconds or more. This reduction in data transmission delay is a game changer, particularly for remote areas where laying fiber optic cables or building other infrastructure is not feasible. I love how it's opening up possibilities for remote communities. It's not just about faster internet. It's about inclusion and opportunity. Speaking of small satellites, Selena, did you hear about the German Aerospace Center's Cube ISL? That stands for CubeSat Intersatellite Link System. It's an absolute game changer for small satellite communications. We're talking about inter-satellite data transmission speeds of 100 Mbps and downlink speeds of up to 1 Gbps. 
That's incredible! Those kinds of speeds rival even terrestrial broadband connections. CubeSat intersatellite links must be a huge step forward for small satellite networks. How does it work? It's all about innovation in intersatellite communication. The CubeSat intersatellite links system uses laser communication technology, often called optical links. Instead of relying on traditional radio frequencies, these lasers allow satellites to exchange data with one another much faster and more efficiently. This is especially useful for constellations like Starlink or Earth observation networks, where satellites need to coordinate and share data. Laser communication? That makes so much sense, especially with the increasing demand for real-time data transmission in applications like disaster response or environmental monitoring. It's not just faster, it's more efficient too, isn't it? Exactly. Let me give you an example. During the 2023 wildfires in Canada, Earth observation satellites provided high-resolution imagery of the affected regions in near real time. This allowed firefighters and emergency teams to plan their response more effectively and save lives. CubeSat intersatellite links wasn't used in this instance, but you can imagine how such technology could further enhance these capabilities in the future. That's amazing! I can see how real-time data transmission can make such a difference in life or death situations. Can you point out any other use cases? Definitely. For example, during Cyclone Fanny in 2019 in India, Earth observation satellites provided rapid updates about storm paths and flood zones. This data enabled evacuation plans to be executed quickly, potentially saving thousands of lives. With CubeSat intersatellite links, this type of communication will become faster and more efficient, allowing for even better disaster response in the future. And that 1 Gbps downlink speed you mentioned, wow! That could revolutionize how data is sent from satellites back to Earth. High-resolution imagery, scientific data, or even video streams could be transmitted in near real time, right? You're spot on, Selena. For example, agricultural researchers could receive real-time satellite imagery of crop health to detect issues like pest infestations or drought stress. With CubeSat intersatellite links, these insights could be delivered much faster, allowing farmers to take action immediately. Oh, it's fascinating how far we've come. Systems like CubeSat intersatellite links show just how much potential there is in small satellite technologies. They're no longer just miniature satellites. They're becoming fully capable platforms for cutting edge science and global connectivity. Who knows? With systems like CubeSat intersatellite links in play, we might see entirely new applications for satellite networks that we can't even imagine today. I fully agree to that, Selena. With technologies like this driving the evolution of small satellites, the future of space communications looks brighter than ever.